This instructional companion that continues the, or continuation of the simple hoist falls under the major topic dynamics and vibrations which has the following five chapters properties of solid bodies, kinematics, kinetics which is where this uh, instructional companion uh, comes from, mechanisms and power transmission systems and vibrating systems. The chapter on kinetics covers the many topics shown and in particular again we'll be using uh, Newton's laws of motion both some of the forces and some of the moments motion of rigid bodies we'll have uh, one body is in pure rotation the other in pure translation and we'll be continuing with the uh, discussion linear to rotational motion although that's my type title uh, in the MERM is called cable tension from an accelerated suspended mass which is what we did in the first part simple hoist uh, number one was to talk about that. That was uh, actually the whole system released from rest. Here we're actually going to do the simple hoist where we're going to try to raise the weight and, and do that. So let's uh, move to that uh, initial slide. So this is the first slide from um, Simple Hoist uh, 1 in which the real hoist problem here is where uh, we would be looking and that's what we're going to do here in a minute uh, calculating a, a torque C. I call it C instead of T because we've got tension in the cable. We don't have too many T's here. Need to accelerate a block at a particular rate and I'm going to use 4 feet per second squared because uh, if you remember from uh, the first one where we did the MERM example that was the uh, acceleration of block B when this was released from rest and dropped so we're going to use the same same thing uh, same going to use the same information uh, for this one uh, but uh, in this uh, we're going to we're going to now uh, work this problem where uh, block B is accelerating up we know what that is and, and again what is that uh, a torque C that was going to be required so as we did with the MERM example let's go and draw free separate free bodies you always separate dynamic systems into pieces that you know what's happening uh, the pulley uh, of course has the, the winch and the motor and the gearbox and all is on that axle uh, A is in pure rotation and block B is in pure translation okay so let's go to the next page with the uh, free body diagrams Okay, we've got uh, a lot uh, here. Of course, we've got our pulley again uh, with our axle forces AX and AY. It's fixed. Uh, we've got a radius R. Uh, we have uh, the lifting, so we've got our couple C is uh, counterclockwise. So our coordinate system still going to have X and Y um, as we normally do, but uh, clockwise, counterclockwise is purely arbi arb arbitrary. And so in order not to just introduce negatives unnecessarily, we'll make counterclockwise positive. Therefore, alpha is counterclockwise. And because uh, that would mean the block would go up, uh, that's our specified A sub B, uh, we're going to let our coordinate system for uh, the block B be positive up. So all of that. Uh, fairly straightforward with that. Now, uh, as far as the information is concerned, in the previous page uh, we had specified the acceleration is 4 feet per second. That's our requirement, so we're looking for C. Uh, I'm going to use the same I sub A, except I'm going to use slug feet squared. Uh, in the MERM example, it was like 70 pound mass feet squared. We'll divide by 32.2 pound mass per slug and get like 2.17 something. So I just said, ah, let's use 2.2 there. Uh, the diameter was two feet so let's make again keep a radius of one foot and the weight is 10 pounds not 10 pound mass 10 pounds so we'll use all of that so let's uh, do the uh, three equations of motion for the pulley some of the forces in X and Y are essentially the same as for the uh, release from rest but the uh, some of the moments is still about point a but it'll be a, a different equation. So let's do all that uh, saving uh, YouTube time here Okay, again, since A is fixed, a fixed axle, we've got AX is equal to zero, nothing happening left and right. Some of the forces uh, vertically, we've got AY minus W minus T. So therefore, as we uh, happened before, we've got the same AY. You can use that AY in order to calculate the diameter of the axle, bearings, other kinds of things that are there. So it's not, it's not uh, uh, useless here we did it for that but uh, for the motion we just needed uh, the sum of the moments about a and remember our points are either the CG or fix well that's the same for a so that's I alpha I about the point you pick uh, so if you take moments at uh, uh, at point a put your finger there we've got and counterclockwise is positive we've got C minus R times T uh, is equal to I alpha and that's our equation number three 
So let's do uh, a block B like we did before. Okay, with uh, positive up, we've got T minus WB equals mass times the acceleration, MB times A sub B. Again, this is the U.S. system, so let's make that WB over G times A sub B, uh, acceleration of B. And here, we, we're not looking for it. We're given that, so that works. But we still are connected. The two systems are connected through T, and they're all also connected through the kinematics, uh, which we need. Uh, last time uh, for the other one, we have equations 3 and 4 were in three unknowns. They were the acceleration of B, alpha, and T. Here we know the acceleration of B, but we've now substituted that with C. So C, T, and alpha are now our three uh, unknowns. So let's write that down. So uh, the three unknowns are C, the couple which are really after the main thing, but alpha, A, and T are still unknowns in those equations. So we get our third, third equation that we need uh, as far as the three unknowns from kinematics. Again, do kinematics last because you can tell exactly what you need. That's the same relation. Acceleration of B is equal to R alpha. If you look at a point right here. Uh, its acceleration or rotating wheel is R times alpha. It's got to match up with A sub B uh, or um, the cable will break or buckle. So uh, let's now pull those together like we did in the last uh, uh, instructional companion on the next page and see what we've got. A lot simpler than we, than we had before, as you will see. Well, this one will solve a lot quicker because up here we're looking for C so we can solve for it. Uh, we can find T from this one because we know WB and A sub B. We can also find alpha A to put up here because we know A sub B and R. So this one just sort of falls right on out. Okay, so from 3 we get C is equal to IA uh, alpha A plus the RT term. Uh, the tension comes out to be... Um, looks just like very similar except it has a plus here instead of a minus so t will be greater than w sub b in the, in the other example the mer example this was one minus so therefore tension was less than b and then since we know a b we can just solve for alpha a so let's put all those numbers in and see what we come up with the uh, the given information Okay, we calculate then T as uh, WB, 1 plus acceleration of B divided by gravity. Well, we got 10 pounds times this term here, 4 over uh, 32.2. And when you do that, you hit about eh, at the one decimal place. As you'll see, that's enough, 11.2 pounds, which, of course, is greater than the 10. So T is greater than W, not equal to. A lot of mistakes there. Uh, simply A sub A is four, uh, 4 feet per second squared divided by 1 foot. That's easy, 4 radians per second squared. So take those two and go back up here and put everything into C, and let's calculate it. Okay, well, pull this back down here. So we've had uh, C sub A, I mean C is I, um, I times alpha plus RT, our 2.2 .2 slug foot squared times 4 radians per second squared. Well, you've got a slug foot per second squared, which is a pound, left another foot, so you got foot pounds there, and then we've got uh, 1 times 11.2. Uh, so essentially this comes out to be 8.8 .8 plus 11.2, and surprising, I don't know how I did this, came out to be about 20 uh, foot pounds here right on about 20 foot-pounds. And from there, uh, you could then size the motor for its initial torque uh, and then the other criteria for uh, this simple hoist or winch. Okay. Well, let's, uh, again, don't uh, intend for you to go through all of this analysis in the exam. Uh, I want you to just have the equations handy to you. So I'm going to do that on the next two pages. I'm going to summarize this one and then re, uh, re-summarize the one from uh, the first uh, instructional companion on simple hoist. Okay. So I'm going to go to the next page. Okay, again, showing our basic system here, uh, finding out what the torque is to accelerate uh, this block B. This would be uh, specified. You would be given the alpha A, alpha A, IA. Uh, the alpha would be calculated uh, from, from there, knowing the R that's given. Uh, and the tension would be calculated WB times 1 plus uh, A sub B divided by G. So, well, this is just, you know, don't let them have this one. Looks hard at first, but uh, you've already done the, the work. You know where it comes from, and so now you can just use these equations. Okay? 
Well, let's uh, let me do the uh, summarize the one from Simple Hoist, the MERM example in which this system is just released from rest and come up with oh, let me make sure we got T here, uh, tension in the cable. Okay, so let's do the one for uh, the the one that was in Simple um, Hoist number one. Okay, on this one, I just it's just a minor point, but uh, the pulley is labeled A, so the I sub A and the alpha A is associated with that. Okay, okay so for the one that's now uh, system released from rest, Okay, and what we have is we don't know A sub B, so there's an equation for it. Alpha sub A, uh, tension T, uh, our uh, I sub A would be given. Uh, could be something like one half MR squared for a perfect cylinder, but at this point I think they're just going to give you either kilogram meter squared or slug foot squared. Of course, they give you a pound mass divided by 32.2 pound mass per slug. Again, we have this sort of complicated looking um, uh, A sub B up here uh, for the U.S. system. That's what you would use. If you were in the SI, they would give you MB, so multiply that by G to get the numerator, and you would already then have um, this part that would just be M sub B. Okay? And uh, once you find uh, the acceleration, then that's equal to R alpha A. Solve for alpha A, so you've got it. And then the tension is WB1 minus AB over G. Uh, notice the difference between the previous one, uh, the one pulling up. There's a positive there. So again, uh, when you have a block, uh, it, uh, the tension is only equal the weight if it's a statics problem. This is not a statics problem. Okay, Not a statics problem. T does not equal W. Uh, it either is less than W if it's accelerating down. It's greater than W if it's accelerating up. Big, big point. Hope these two have helped you. Uh, this is about all you can do with rotational uh, to translational motion. Um, if you got uh, the only other is the uh, slider crank. If you remember, we did the kinematics on that, where the crank is in pure rotation, the slider is in pure translation, and the connecting rod is in 2D plane motion. Uh, remember, if you're, you've got that problem, do the kinetics on or the dynamics. The answer is B. <laughs> right. Right. Okay. Again, I invite you to visit my website as part of your exam preparations.